Hi everybody, my name is Kim and welcome back to Bookmarks and Breadsticks. Okay, welcome back. Today I am here to bring you a book review, but shocker to some, it is not a food book review. I am actually here to bring a review of All American Muslim Girl. This is a young adult book by Nadine Jolie Courtney. I First off, I just have to say I'm in love with this book. What if I'm not always a good Muslim? I'm still a Muslim and I'm still good. So this book is about Allie Abraham. She's got a lot going for her. She's a smart, headstrong young woman brought up by two working parents who are emotionally available. She seems like she's had it all. She's got it all. She moved a lot for her father's job and now she's landed in Providence. And she has caught the eye of the most handsome boy at school. He's popular and sweet and his name is Wells Henderson. One of the main problems of this book is that Wells Henderson's dad is Jack Henderson. Jack Henderson is one of those Fox News propaganda conspiracy theory guys who really is just anti-Muslim. Obviously by the title, all-American Muslim girl, Allie focuses and struggles with her Muslim identity. Her mother is from Georgia, white as can be, and married her father, uh, Muhammad, who goes by Mo. And Allie, being a product of these two people, passes as white. And Allie, throughout the book, is very, very aware of her white privilege and is trying to understand what her role is. Her father, while Muslim, does not, is not a practicing Muslim and does not raise Allie to understand how to read and write in Arabic or to practice the religion. They are also, I'm going to say it wrong, um, Sicarian, Caesareans? I'll put the actual typing here. They are specifically um, a people with a lineage from the southern tier of Russia. So they don't look like, as like, at least as the way the author depicts it, they do not look like they're average. Muslim, you know, the guy, like, because they come from southern Russia, they take on a lot of characteristics that are more associated with Caucasians, and that is, um, if I put the spellings next to them, you can see how Ali's heritage is where the word Caucasian derives from. Okay, so getting that out of the way, net net, Ali is super smart. She's well liked. She's made a good group of friends. She's got the eye of one of the most popular boys at school. And his dad is basically a Trump loving racist and anti Muslim. So that's the first big thing. And I think that plot line is much more of the young adult trope. And the real journey is about Allie embracing who she is and not who she is defined by society, but who she is for herself, her 16 year old self. So obviously this could change, you know, if there was ever a sequel. Taking a step back before jumping into, did I like the characters? Did I like the pacing? I loved this book. I loved this book because I am very much like Ali. I am Iranian American. My father is Persian. He is from Iran. My mother is from New Jersey. And I very much have my white privilege and I pass as white. I did not grow up with the dad that reinforced the Muslim religion or a lot of those Muslim and Middle Eastern traditions. There were times where we butted heads because of it based on the way I dressed, the concept of dating. A lot of that stuff was part of my upbringing where my dad didn't want me to be alone in the same room as a, as a guy, even if he was just my friend and we sat on opposite couches. But I have never felt so seen and so understood until I picked up this book. I didn't start learning Farsi until I was 29 when I moved here to Chicago and I finally found a class where I could learn to read and write. And a lot of the people who sat in that classroom with me were children of immigrants who also were whitewashed, raised in the American way, and basically told to put that heritage aside because it wasn't safe to embrace that part of who we were. I was in the sixth grade when 9-11 happened and my dad's dick of a boss asked him the next day if he helped knock down the Twin Towers because for some unfortunate reason that was the day my dad went to the doctor to get his heart checked out. 
So when I've asked my parents in the past why I wasn't raised, you know, Muslim, why I don't speak Farsi, they said we did it for your protection. We raised you Catholic, like your mother. There's nothing wrong with Catholicism, for the, for the record. But I have always struggled feeling like I was less than a whole person because I couldn't, I didn't know a whole half of myself. Something Ali also deals with is, is she Muslim enough to combat her friends who sneak around in their white privilege who are racist? And sometimes, you know, Jack Henderson's the obvious racist, but those inherent biases, she has to deal with that with her popular friends, her friends, her friends who really actually have the same racist tendencies. And because Allie passes his wife, they deem her as safe and then they talk about it. Allie throughout most of the book was hiding the fact that she was Muslim or had any Muslim affiliation. I've dealt with that a lot too. I've dealt with having friends who are, have parents that are hugely, you know, calling everyone a radical is like radical Islam or everyone who's Muslim is a terrorist. And I want to walk up to them and go, you know, you're talking about me. You're talking about my dad, who's been a citizen for 35 years. You're talking about my family, my family that my dad and my mother worked hard to put three kids through colleges with master's degrees. We're good humans. We're just put aside our accomplishments and our privileges. We're good people. And just because you heard the word Muslim, you've decided that every Muslim's a bad person. And that is what Ali is actively trying to combat. And she ends up joining the Muslim Student Union and meeting friends who are also on their own unique journeys, understanding and balancing their Muslim identities within America. I won't say that they're, I don't want to call them just her Muslim friends. That's kind of what they started as, people who were reading the Quran, were learning Arabic, but they are much more unique and diverse characters than just this new, Ali, Ali leaves behind the popular friends to go become friends with the Muslim people. Not like that. It really isn't. I think she just needs to find, Ali throughout the book is trying to find what feels natural to her. And she finds comfort in these friends who are struggling with their identities and on their own journeys as well. But she does work on her relationships with some of her more white popular friends. In terms of pacing, the book's broken up into three parts. I felt like the last part, which was ma mainly focused around family, a little rushed. I could have read a trilogy all about Allie, but maybe that's because I was so excited to have a character I related to, an own voice author. I mean, I already follow her on Instagram. I've already sent her, the author, a bunch of messages on how much I love this book. I, maybe I just wanted more. It's young adult. It's almost 400 pages. I'm so happy with what I got, but I just wanted more. I also did appreciate that her boyfriend, Wells, like he is a product and lives within the privilege that his father's propaganda and hatred brings and is often the recipient of his father's love by buying Wells things. And Allie recognize, Allie's friends tell her like, you can't fix him and he will have to make his own decision because Allie struggles with, can I really be with a guy whose dad is a racist? Am I giving him a pass? Am I, by not fighting it, am I complicit? I think the book tackles a lot for a 16 year old protagonist and I highly, highly recommend it. I could go on forever, but let me know in the comments below if you would pick up All American Muslim Girl. I would love to discuss it with someone. I'm in love, but I would love to hear it. From Okay, my battery is basically dead. I don't remember where I left off in this review, but I was talking about All American Muslim Girl and how much I loved this book. I think I was pretty close to my wrap up actually, but I did wanna tell you and pop in and talk about something really cool that happened over the weekend. This past weekend, it was Yalda. Yalda is the winter solstice in the Persian community. And it's essentially like a New Year's Eve. And there are a couple of traditions. Obviously, I am only with my husband, so these it's a New Year's Eve party. You're supposed to be with your family and your friends, but it was just Dan and I. And some of the great traditions that I really enjoyed was that you're supposed to eat a lot of like red-based fruit and vegetable fruits and foods, like pomegranates. Um, you're supposed to eat nuts, ajil to celebrate. You're also supposed to eat watermelon. And I didn't have watermelon. It's December. So I did make a we did make watermelon cupcakes. So basic a cupcake, painted it pink, added um, a little border, and then added a couple of chocolate chips to kind of 
replicate seeds. The other big part of Yalda is that you are supposed to make a wish for the following year and you keep it a secret. And then what you do is you randomly open up to a poem by Hafiz. Hafiz is a famous Persian poet. So I was able to find two books of his poems at Open Books. One is I Hear God. I Hear God Laughing, excuse me. And the other is The Gift. Let's see if that comes into focus. There we go. It was awesome to have these poems and I, I'm going to finish reading them in general. But the poem that I got that I thought was really moving is Cupping My Hands Like a Mountain Valley. So when Dan came up with his wish and had to read a poem, his poem was one page. I got Cupping My Hands Like a Mountain Valley and it was eight pages and we were reading the poems out loud to each other. Uh, so it was a little bit to get through. But there was one line, one stanza in the poem that I really, really loved. I'm trying to find it. So here's the, you know, it's eight pages long this poem, but here's the stanza that really stood out to me. We should lean against each other more in such a strange world as this that can make you scared and even believe in that lie called death. We should support each other, give more warmth in such a demanding world as this. And I think that really sums up 2020 the idea that we need to be kinder to each other, we need to provide warmth and love for each other. Um, but I was really, really excited to participate in Yalda. Um, when you wanna say Happy Yalda, you say Yalda Mubarak. Um, and I was able to follow a couple other Persian friends that I have on Instagram to also see what they were doing. They, This was my first Yalda. We were very scaled down this year, but it was fun to learn from my friends in the, commu the Persian community in Chicago and see what everyone else was up to. Dan likes to say that he's a typical Irish white guy and doesn't have a lot of traditions that he grew up with. So he really enjoyed being able to participate in Yalda with me, even if it was just a makeshift little celebration between he and I. I did get to send a couple pictures to my dad, who's back at home in New York, still going through chemo. So it does help me feel a little bit closer to him. So the more books I can find, even if they're young adult, different genres that I can relate to, where I feel seen, that bring me closer to being accepting that my identity is a journey, especially as I learn more about my Persian side, my Muslim side, etc. It brings a great sense of comfort and I really enjoyed the book. I'm also excited to get through these books of poetry. So let me know in the comments below, would you read All American Muslim Girl? Have you ever heard of the poet Hafiz? I didn't know about him until a week ago, um, but let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. If you would like to support my channel, I have linked in my description below my Patreon. You can buy me a cup of coffee or you can consider signing up for the Read It and Eat subscription box. I am accepting pre-orders for the lemon box that will ship in February. I hope you are all well. Please wear a mask, hug your family because I am without mine this holiday season and I miss them dearly. Be well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.